what are the best screwdrivers for EDC? That's the question I'm going to answer today. And with that said, let's do the damn thing. Number one comes from a long time ago, back when I went to Harbor Freight and bought all of the possible EDC gear stuff they had in the store. These were one of the coolest things. They're really, really cheap. $7 for a set of three. You get 12 bits. They are micro bits and they are not the best bits. However, it's really hard to complain for $7. Like it's hard to complain about anything about this whole set. Small, compact, it has knurling. It's really good to use. They're, they're good. The bits suck. You can replace the bits. In fact, you can buy this set and a Weeha micro bit set for less than the next expensive screwdriver on the list. $7 plus a micro bit set is maybe what? 10, 12 bucks. You're still under $20 for three screwdrivers plus some extra bits. And it stores all of these in the handle. You can store nine inside the, the actual screwdriver very comfortably. And if you want to risk it, you can throw one in the magnetic retention on the screwdriver itself. This is going to hold more than any other screwdriver on this list. So if you're looking for maximum bit storage and budget friendly, buy this thing right here. They're made of aluminum. They're not going to last forever, but again, seven bucks, really hard to go wrong with these. Next up, this one is from a very recent video, the unusual EDC V5. And I chose this because it looks a whole lot like a screwdriver, a flashlight rather, that I've carried for years. This is the Prometheus Beta QR V2. And I found out after making that video that one of the reasons is because the same person designed both of these. That makes a lot more sense now. But this is the CRKT Pocket Stash Bit Driver. And it's honestly a really, really good screwdriver. This cap screws off here. You have four full-sized quarter-inch bits in the cap or set, stored in the body rather. And then the driver portion is under this quick release. So that works as a keychain or a pocket clip. And then you have a quarter inch slot on the end. And it's a solid screwdriver, also made of aluminum, very, very lightweight, easy to forget it's there. And this is gonna set you back about 25 bucks. It's honestly probably the best screwdriver as a screwdriver on the list, just because it kind of checks all the boxes and is still pretty budget friendly. The next one, you've probably already heard me talk about it before too, even recently. Uh, I did a video specifically on the Leatherman ratchet wrench, but I said in that video that I had also wished I'd picked up the screwdriver portion. This ended up going in my Altoid survival tin, and that's because it is very compact, but its size doesn't hinder how good it is. It's really, really good as a screwdriver. It has a quarter inch driver in the handle, and you can just use that as a screwdriver. You can't get a whole lot of torque on it, but when you need it, you can just flip it around here and you have a ratchet wrench and you can get all the torque you'd ever need for something that's you know gonna be done with a EDC screwdriver. If you need it, you can actually do one of two things. If you need more torque, you can extend the handle like this right here with, a, with an extension, or if you need more reach, you could put that extension here. So there's a lot that can be done with this tiny, tiny little ratchet wrench or screwdriver, and it all fits inside this little tin that it goes with. And I threw extra bits in here and that extension packs away very, very nice and neat and small, and it fits inside my Altoids tin. That is a really cool screwdriver kit. And you could just throw this whole thing in your pocket if you don't mind something floating loose like that. So this screwdriver minus this extension in the bits will set you back 30 bucks. I have a Weeha kit in here that's another 12 or 13. That is one of the coolest things I've come across since I started this channel. I think that's a really cool product. All right, I would say that this one is tied for the best compact screwdriver. It's a three-way tie. It's a four-way tie. They're all good. There's no winners here. All of these are good. Uh, this one I came across in researching this. So some of these sent me down this path. This is one that I found in my digging. This is the O-Knife Otical? Otical? O-Knife Otical D1, uh, whatever. It stores four micro bits in the handle and it has magnetic retention for those. It also has magnetic retention here and you get a total, because all these are double-sided, of eight bits stored in this tiny little screwdriver. So you can use a screwdriver as an inline driver. It also has a wrench option. I think this is a really cool design. It works well because you can get grip on it because it's squared, even though it's really small, still works. You can increase that if you put like a lanyard on it or something. Um, but this has been, this is designed to go on a keychain, but it works really well, honestly. Uh, I've used this thing to tear down a knife before and I quite like it. It is a little finicky to get the bits back in there sometimes, but you could swap those out with bits that you want. If you can get some double-sided bits that you'd prefer to have, 
I think this thing's cool and it's only about 35 bucks. All right, I've had one of these for a long time. I've included them in a lot of different roundups and, and lists and in my EDCs that I go to a store. This is the Gerber Armbar Drive and it's one of the best budget multi-tools out there without pliers. Uh, if we're not talking specifically in terms of screwdrivers, it's got a pretty good blade on it. It's not the best steel in the world, but that's a good working edge. You also have a really, really good set of scissors on this thing. So this checks a lot of boxes in a very compact package. You also have a flathead or I think that's more of like a reamer and all right there. You have a pommel for some reason. Um, and there's your bottle opener. There it is. Maybe that's a pry if you want to consider it that. But the screwdriver on this thing is the highlight for sure. No doubt about it. Obviously you're not getting a ton of bits in this. You get two, you have a flathead and a Phillips on a double-sided. You could carry your own bits and put whatever you want in here. But as a screwdriver, this thing's really good. You get a lot of torque on it. It works well, holds the bits well. And as a whole, you're getting a lot of bang for buck in terms of just how much pocket size this thing's taken up. They aren't the cheapest and I feel like they've gone up in price. I, maybe I'm misremembering, but I don't remember them being how much this is now, which is which is $45. Maybe they always have been. I just don't feel like they were before. Correct me if I'm wrong, but $45, I still think this is a really solid tool for what you're getting. Like I said, a lot of bang for your buck there. And that is the Gerber armbar drive. All right, we're digging one way up from the past here. Way back in the day, I went to Lever Gears headquarters and hung out with them for a day. And that was when this thing was still coming out. I'm pretty sure this is the bit vault and at its core, it's really just a little storage container for your pocket, right? It's got a pocket clip. It's got a little clip on here so you can clip it to your keys if you want, but it has a bit driver in the end and a wrench there. So you can work with this as you would any screwdriver. And if you want, you can store the bits inside. You can also store whatever you want inside of here. I've done little fire kits. I've done, just medicine, all sorts of stuff in here, but you have little dividers. I've lost most of them because I've had these things for like three or four years now. It's really cool and it works really well as a screwdriver. The only downside for me, the only one, we're gonna steal this extension for a second. This is the biggest downside. I swear to God, if that fits right now. Okay, yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> That's how tight the tolerances are on this thing. It barely, holds bits. So if you need something to hold onto the bit and extend it, you can't fit it in here. There's just no way an extension is going to fit inside this thing. That's the only thing that really sucks. So you have to carry an extension separate if you want. And when you're working on something, if you don't have enough clearance, you just can't even reach. That's really the only downside to this. They're about 50 bucks, which for all the stuff you're getting out of this, it's not bad. It's just, I wish they'd make it two millimeters thicker so you could put an extension of some sort in there. That's the only thing. Just because I know I'm probably going to get the question. How many bits could it hold? I believe just six. Of course, you could use double sided bits and some other things, but just six bits. Anyway, that is the lever gear bit vault. All right, the next item on this list, we'll go back to my keys, uh, is probably the biggest inspiration for this video because of this. I've been a huge proponent of this for probably nine months to a year because it's about the most minimal screwdriver you can have. This thing goes on your keys, you have a double-sided bit, and that's, that's that. I mean, it does not get any more simple than this. However, when you have a screwdriver this small, the only way you can get any kind of torque on it is to kind of get tension in there, and then you can kind of twist. You would actually go the other way. You can kind of twist, but you're using the keys to help you give torque, uh, it's not always the most practical. The Kibit is pretty good, not gonna lie. I still like it, but Monterey Bay Knives reached out maybe about a month or two ago and said, hey, we wanna send you one of these to try out. This is their Keychain Torx tool. It's only in brass right now, and it only stores two bits. Uh, you could do, again, a third if you wanna risk losing one, but that magnetic retention is pretty strong. You probably wouldn't lose one. What it came with was a T6 and T8. This is the most common that we use here in the EDC world. But there's two things about this. It's a little bit longer and the knurling. It's the same exact diameter. Actually, this is a little bit thicker, just a hair. But the knurling on this makes it so much easier to use. It seems so insignificant, but it is a huge improvement to the usability of such a small screwdriver. It's only a little bit longer, 
but it works so much better. And this is the one I carry on my keys now, and I've used this a bunch, more than I ever really used this thing because it is more usable. Uh, would I like it to store more bits or something? Sure, it doesn't really get any more simple than these. And it's kind of hard to store more bits in something this small and compact. It is a little bit heavier than this one because it's made of brass, but I really like the Keychain Torch tool from Monterey Bay Knives. They're made here in the USA, 70 bucks, and the patina. The patina, it looks so good already, and I've only had it for a few weeks on my keys, so there. That one right now is my favorite, just because it's easier to carry with me because it's just on my keys, and it works really, really, really well. The next one is kind of a twofer, but not really because they're the same product, one's just longer than the other for the most part. Uh, the bit storage is on the back of the Mini, but this is the Vero Fulcrum and the Vero Fulcrum Mini. It is primarily a titanium pry bar, has a pocket clip, and in that end where the pocket clip is, you have a four millimeter bit driver or mini bits. Uh, it comes with two. I think they ship with the flathead and Phillips in there. And then you have Torx that also ship with it and you can swap them in if you want. Uh, but it just works really well as a driver. It's just, I would say the most finicky just in terms of getting the bits out. Uh, and probably the most likely to lose the bits just because they're stored with the O-rings that can dry rot. But once you have them in here, it works really well as a driver. So if you're just looking for something to turn some screws pretty easily, store those bits, and you want to double up in utility, fulcrums are it. So definitely a little more difficult to get the bits out, but if you're looking for a pry bar, something that also looks really cool and stores bits, this is it, the Firo Fulcrum. So these are getting up there in price. We've been going you know, basically in order from cheapest to most expensive. These are not the most expensive we have on the list. Um, I believe the, the Mini is 90 and these are 100 and then obviously you go up from there because there are special versions with lasering like these from Carry Commission. There's also Zermascus and full dress Timascus Fulcrum. So fancy and, and really cool looking. Um, yeah, but it's just kind of functional art, but also really gets the job done just fine. So that is the Vero Fulcrum. Next up, we have Big Idea Design. I think this is one of the most clever designs for an EDC screwdriver because it takes all the mechanisms of a knife and puts them into a screwdriver. So I think it's really cool. It's a clever design. It has magnetic retention. So your detent on this issue, if you may remember from an old video I made, is magnetic. And uh, the bit is also helping them with magnets. So you can overcome the magnet for the detent and the magnet for the bit and send them launching. It's fun, not advised around windows, uh, but you have four bits stored in this. So they took the design and upgraded the original EDS or everyday screwdriver. They took a, a design cue from the next item we're gonna talk about so that you could store one more in the shank of the screwdriver, which is very clever. So you have two along the backside, one in the handle, and then it stores one in the actual driver itself. It has a deeper pocket clip than before, so they've redesigned that. But this is the EDS-2, so the upgraded version of the EDS. I think it's just really clever. It's also really kind of fidgety. And titanium frame lock screwdriver. That's just kind of cool. Also, not exactly the most affordable option, but it is one of the most functional in terms of carrying bits and how easy it is to turn screws with and, and just usability and carryability. I like the way that it, it fits in the pocket and the clip and everything. $120 for the EDS-2. So not cheap, but very, very good for an EDC screwdriver. One of the most pocketable that packs the most utility. And finally, one of the best screwdrivers ever. Uh, I love this thing. This is the Bitbar Inline Max. So the Bitbar Inline, same gist. It's a little smaller and it takes quarter inch bits. The Bitbar Inline Max takes Leatherman style bits and increases the number of bits that you can carry. So you have Five double-sided bits means you can carry 10 bits in this screwdriver in a pretty compact package. It's a little bit bigger than a normal pin that you might carry for EDC. Uh, so for me, this is one of the most carryable. Yeah, I mean, it, it goes in the pocket just like a pry bar or a pin or a knife. It, it fits really well in the pocket, carries well, and you get all the bits that you could ever want. And if you don't like these bits, you can just buy the Leatherman Bit Kit and put those bits in here. So I think that's really, really solid. The other really awesome thing about this is the ability to take the inline driver out and turn it into a T-handle or an offset for extra torque. So that's why I think this thing is really, really nice. When you need to really turn on something, you can grip this thing like this right here and push and turn at the same time. 
that makes this thing one of my favorite screwdrivers of all time. However, again, not cheap. Same price as the EDS-2, these are $120. If you want something similar, but less, you can get the Bitbar Inline, which I believe are 100 or 110. But this one is the Mac Daddy. Very, very good. And one of my favorite things to have in my bag. I don't really carry it in my pocket. Wouldn't have any problems with it, but if I've got a bag, I'd rather just have this in the bag with this and this. Those stay in the bag all together. Before we wrap this up, I just wanna touch on some of the things that you may notice are missing from this video. Primarily these precision drivers. These I don't really consider EDC screwdrivers because this is obviously more of a desk item. This is heavy and kind of bulky. Uh, same with that. This is really no bigger or any more difficult to carry than this, but it's missing a pocket clip and it just feels like something that I'm gonna put in a maintenance kit, not my pocket. So it's not saying that this isn't great. I think this is one of the best precision drivers you can buy, period, but it's not something that I'm gonna EDC. And kind of the same deal with this. This goes well in a pouch and a bag, but uh, the Bitbar 2, but it's not something I'm gonna put in my pocket, even though it does have a clip. For me, this clip is more for like Molly and attaching to things, but it's a little bit too big and bulky as a screwdriver, especially when something like the Bitbar Inline Max exists. Just wanted to say there are some really good screwdrivers that I'm not including in this because I don't consider them EDC. But the other ones, best EDC screwdrivers in my opinion, period. But that's it, those are my 10 favorite EDC screwdrivers. If I missed something or you think there's one I should check out, let me know in the comments down below. And also tell me what your favorite one that you saw in this video was. And if you found something in this video that you didn't know about before, everything I talked about in this video will be linked down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. And until then, carry on.